In the previous lesson, we talked about the fact that a box at rest will stay at rest until a force is applied on the box, which means that until a force is applied on the box at rest, it will not move. In other words, motion is caused by forces. Now we also talked about the fact that forces really are due to the interaction an object has with other objects. For example, if I push the box forward, I am interacting with the box. So the word interaction is used in physics when two objects are exerting forces on each other. So when we interact, we exert forces. So the conclusion that you have to draw from that statement is interactions generate forces. Let me say that again. Interactions generate forces and these forces brings about motion. Now, in this short piece, um, I will define the term a system as used in the context of mechanics. Now, later on in week 7, we will still define the word a system as used in the context of ecology and biology. Now, the box we are talking about, whose motion we are interested in, is our system. That is how simple it is. So, in mechanics, a system is basically the object or group of objects whose motion we are interested in. For example, if we are interested in the motion of a box, then the box is our system. If we are interested in the motion of the box and the boy, then the box and the boy is our system. Understand that. Now, it is important for you to understand systemic thinking because once you identify the system, then automatically you will know what the system is interacting with. For example, if the box is our system, then automatically we know that the box is interacting with you pushing the box as well as interacting with the earth because it's actually standing on earth. Therefore, identifying the system helps us to know what the system is interacting with and subsequently will also help us to know the type of forces exerted on the system. Remember, interactions generate forces. Forces brings about motion. So if we identify the types of interactions, we can identify the forces and which will also help us to analyze the resulting motion. Very awesome. Keep in mind that every system has an imaginary boundary. Now, you shouldn't bother yourself about the boundary of a system. Um, it's just an imaginary boundary. In, in mechanics, it really doesn't matter. What matter is, have we identified the system? Um, on, the, on the one hand, once the system is specified, all other objects that are outside of the imaginary boundary of the system constitute what we call the environment or the surroundings. Let me say that again. Once we specify what our system is, then anything outside of the system constitute what we call the surroundings or 
the environment. Let me give you an example. Suppose we place a book on a table and we are interested in the motion of the book. Then the table, the earth and you constitute the surroundings and the book will be our system. Let me give you another example. Suppose you are sitting in a car and you are driving and you have a couple of friends with you in that car and we are interested in the motion of that car then the system is not just the car alone consists of you, your friends and the car. Now if I am an observer outside of the car then I am not part of the system, I am part of the surroundings. So it is important that in every scenario we understand what our system is because ultimately it will tell us what forces are acting on the system which subsequently will give us an idea the course of motion of the system. So if you have any questions so far, please ask in the discussion forum under this video. Ask in the discussion.